part 19 and to begin the fight against Hei Yi at their last remaining territory. So this is probably the most prominent Yellow Turban faction been up against them for the whole of the campaign. This is a fight for the last county under Chen, which we haven't taken yet. Up until now, we still have not unified the whole of Chen, and if we win this, we will manage that. So, two generals here. One of them is unbreakable. Yeah, this guy's unbreakable. Big bodyguard of 83, and high armor of 52, relatively high. High charge bonus, definitely 253. And this guy, not so much. Just a large bodyguard that's not very potent. One armor piercing, god damn. So if we had Dian Wei or someone with really high armor, this guy would do no damage to him, pretty much. Sort of average melee damage, base melee damage, but absolutely no armor piercing. High speed though, 84. It's kind of a high speed. We're outnumbered, but when we have Dun, Sao Sao, Trebuchet's crossbows, let's follow as one and wash our enemies away. Be water, my friend. Running water will never go still, so we've got to just keep on flowing. I want to try and uh, use the trebuchets here, optimally. Got a body of water here, that's really good, totally impassable. So we can funnel them into the side of it, and then when they blob in these trees, set the trees on fire, which we could also achieve with trebuchets. Don't even need to use fire arrows for that, we could do it with the trebuchets. So I might do that. I might try and blob everything into these trees. Don't have many trees here. Have some here. I might just hide in the ones that are here. Or I might use this howl defilade behind it. Reverse of the slope. That'll be fine as well. Gonna start back here though. Yeah, so trebuchets can be right at the back here. Melee cavalry there, Sao Sao here, auxiliary cavalry there. I think Dune could win this on his own because of his scare effect and his high charge and fighting at night and all the rest of it. I'm gonna try and be really decisive and efficient for this one though, I'm not gonna just cheese it with one unit that's really potent. And all of this has to have fire at well and skirmish off. Fire arrows on, no, definitely. And bait them into these trees. That's what I'm gonna try and do. Use the water to funnel them and set them on fire while they're in the trees and then have Dune come in from here. I think we're hidden there in the trees. They have a lot of units. They have like 10 or 12 units. I think they have just over 2,000. So there's a lot of cavalry, like four units at least. Medium sword cavalry. Sao Sao can charge them with wedge. I'm gonna try and pull the cavalry away so I'll just have infantry blobbing into the side of this lake. And then I can deploy all my tricks. Open my bag of tricks. Gotta be careful with this guy though. High charge, high armor. Unbreakable. So he's totally immune to all of our demoralization effects. We have to actually take him out legitimately. Preferably with crossbows. And he's visible, fuck. I'm gonna just reverse slope. And this camera restriction for this is kind of annoying. I've got to go around. I can't even connect it now. I've got to jump the camera between the two sides. And yeah, they're blobbing, and they're about to come within range of the trebuchets. It's overlapping cavalry there. I might just take that shot. Because how many volleys do we have? 18? Yeah, I'm taking that. Two for one. That looked decent, but we only killed fucking four. Yeah, that's the hit points doing that. Fuck's sake. 
We're still hidden, I think. And I can just fire now. Targets of opportunity. I want to pull them around this though, shit. I'm gonna leave my trebuchets here. Because they're immobile. Relatively. Inflexible. Not bad. I'm gonna try and hit the infantry because it's ranged infantry cavalry and I need to hit the middle. Collateral damage. I'm gonna come from behind now with the cavalry there. I'm gonna bring Southside over here. I want to have them funnel, so I've got to be careful with my manoeuvring. Oh man, are these even hitting? What the fuck? These are not good hits. What the fuck? Yeah, Sal Sal, get over there, man. Come on. It's my bear. Does it get better than that, for fuck's sake? Come on, I better be getting kills now. And I'm sending Sal Sal around. Yep. Pulling back, taking fire needlessly. Oh my god, they're hitting the fucking obstacle. Fuck's sake. Funnel in. God damn it, fucking funnel. Alright, they're funneled around the rock. That should be perfect. Well, I'm getting them blobbed and I'm picking my targets right. There's nothing more I can do. That's just as good as it gets. So if the fucking trebuchets miss, despite all that, then what the fuck? I'm gonna fire it well on these two. I'm gonna bring them forward. I'm gonna have the cavalry be static now, set fire to those trees. Pretty soon I'll be able to just commit the crossbows to this guy. I think I need to do it now. Yeah, I'm doing it. And I'm gonna just go for it now. Dune can take this shit. Samsai can go here. He can take on that unit. Just need to manage my melee cavalry here now though. Two units blob there. And I'm just gonna charge right through this shit. Yep. And fire it well for when they route. Fire it well on everything. Oh come on, what are the trebuchets doing there? What the fuck? Need to get Sao Sao into this shit here. They're breaking. Kill through. And they're getting wrecked there. This cavalry unit's gonna route. I can just commit now. Point blank him. Shit. Oh, they only got like 13 kills. Yeah. Lowered out. And he went for the kill there on Gojia. And fucked it up. Just a cavalry unit there. Yeah, that's it. They got fucking wrecked. And that's pretty much it, I think. Did we kill him already? Is he dead? No wait, 18 left. Alright. He's a priority, taking him out. And a while of him live. One last cavalry unit. And then that's it. All dead. That was pretty much perfect. I saw them get- oh man, are they going for trebuchets? What the fuck? How many, how many did we lose? Where is the number of men on the fucking trebuchets? Ah, oh, they're coming back. One route them. South Sao lost 24, what the fuck? Yeah, that's it. So we're just baiting that guy in front of the crossbows now. And he's fucking dead any second. 5k, 2.7k, dead. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Savsal lost 24. Dune lost 15. Goji, I didn't lose any. Crossbows only, I mean, the trebuchets only killed 250. Crossbows did well, 100 kills on cavalry, pretty much. Ah, oh, stop, 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 stop. Is he dead? No, he's not. He could still die, but he's alright. Yeah. 41, alright, catch them. So that was pretty good.
They got a charge onto the the archer unit. Which one was it? This one, and they only lost like 15 guys. That was the unbreakable guy, I think, that charged into that archer unit and did nothing. Yep, so now we've taken out Hey Ye. Perfect. Close victory in my ass. And the auto resolve was gonna give that to them. He's gonna fucking give it to them. How many did we lose there? Cavalry. I remember that unit was low, so we lost almost no cavalry here. Skirmishers didn't really lose any. No infantry, of course. So maybe we lost less than 100. Close to 100. 95. Holy shit. Yep. And that could have been a bit lower, even. And both of them died. Shit. One of them had an ancillary, a sickle. And the other one had. Don't know if. I think this guy had a sickle. Don't know if he had anything. Faction destroyed, hey ye. Yep. And we now have Chen. F 39 food. And we're selling away 12 of it in diplomacy, so. We have a food surplus right now of 51. And it's gonna go up more and more. Like after we upgrade this again, we get an extra 25% food from Chen. And then 50% food. And someone pointed this out, which I think I overlooked when I was doing food predictions. We get bonus to food production. So 50% from fishing. Fishing gets a steep reward from the reform tree. But we get 25% here. I don't know if that applies to fishing in addition to this, like if it stacks. So I don't know if you get 50%, 50%, and then also the 25% here. Yeah, look at that 25% food, and then 25% from farming. So it seems like you can get 125% extra food from fishing. Yeah, so fucking hell, that's... And then for just land farming, which makes up the basis of food income, 25%. 25%. So we could get another 50% on top of the already very high base amount from the commandery and its synergy. So we get another 50% from this. And then there's his assignments as well. I remember, but that extra reform food, that's substantial. God damn. So we could end up with massive amounts of surplus food. Fucking immense amounts. And Dune ranked up, so now Dune is 7, just like Lubu at the very beginning of the campaign. It's pretty cool. 8 resolve, armor for spear infantry, and come from peasantry for administered commandery. Or just resolve. And armor. Chance of ambushing. Chance of capturing enemy officers. Fuck. Guerrilla deployment for him and his spears. I want to get spears for him, so. Armor for all spear infantry. Oh, it's tough. But that capturing enemy officers in addition to the resolve. Might have to just go along here. Yeah, I've done it. So, we're gonna get capture chance and resolve, and then we can start going through this. And then... Yeah, just this. Like, just these two that we really want now. Because he's gonna be on the field. He's got reduced retinue upkeep, so we want him to be in the field. And he has high base armor, of course. So yeah, he's going to be on the field. And we've got a herdsman here that we don't need to be equipped. So I'm taking that off, because we've got Gojia giving out formations. Like, this scroll here is really good. Where is it? Yeah, so... We have all the formations from Gojia and Sao Sao. If Sao Sao is commanding, he gives all of this when commanding. And then Gojia gives all of these for own army. 
so if Gojia was to leave and we still had Sao Sao, all we would have to do is make Sao Sao the commander. And then he would be bestowing all these formations upon the whole army. Because he's a really high ranking commander. So a high ranking commander is like a low ranking strategist, pretty much. And we've got Lufan over here. Wait a minute, do, do I have Wedge on... Do I have Wedge on these armies? Yeah, enables formation wedge, and that's from. Hang on, what the fuck? Is he given formations? He's not given wedge. That's only when he's commanding that he gives all of these infantry formations, like turtle, which is nice. Sal Ren can turtle, so if we give him yellow dragons, shock infantry with axes, they can testudo turtle up, so. Yellow dragons under Sauron would work. And then there's this, so... Where is that wedge coming from? Enables formation wedge. Um... I don't see it. I don't see how this army is capable of wedge. I don't get it. Oh wait, Sal Ren can give wedge? What the fuck? Sal Ren, when he's commanding, gives wedge. As a sentinel, he gives wedge? What the fuck? Okay, so we can just forget about it. And she gives wedge as well. Wait. Where are her formations? What the fuck? Alright, fuck it. I don't know. I'm thinking about this third army though. Like it's gonna have to be able to wedge, because this guy has a red thoroughbred, high mass horse. I can take it off him or I can let him keep it. He doesn't have a high base speed to begin with. It doesn't even have 25% battle run speed, so... Merge. And then start marching. We want to do that regardless, because the only actions we would do here, conceivably, are to give him another general, recruit a general, or recruit units. So we're going to be doing that after he's moved anyway. And then I can recall Dian Wei, unless I want to move him up to the main. But the thing is, if I do that, and Sal Ren doesn't move up before they do. I don't know which what, what the turn order is. It may be the case that Sansa moves up and attacks and helps me fight this. He, he might assist me, so I'm gonna just try that. I'm gonna besiege. Starve out, and yeah, look at all that cavalry. One, two, three, four, five units. Decisive defeat, totally overwhelmed. Starve out. And then, depending on the turn order, they might sally forth and push me back, or Sansa might back me up for this big fight. And then, because I'm the one that lays siege, I will get the mine. <laughs> so I might have sneaked this. I think he intends to do that. He's on a warpath right now. He was attacking here helping me there. So he's fixated on Liu Biao's vassals, I think. I don't think he's going to go up to Liu Biao and try and conquer over there. I think he's got the right idea of taking out his vassals, dividing and conquering. And then Sao Ren, moving him up to. If I go this way, it'll take just over two turns. If I go this way, it will take a lot more, so... But I'm thinking about whether it'll be faster to go up here than there, or there than here. And I'm gonna go there, I think, first. Jiangxia. And also, I've been thinking about these small minor factions. I like that the idea of assembling a big collection of vassals and getting free tribute, and having all this military support wherever I need it. So I can just call to arms all my vassals on any enemies, but 
for this campaign, I'm trying to stick to the style that fits with it, which is to blitz with cavalry. Because Sal Sal has really good cavalry, and he himself is a really good cavalry unit, so I'm trying to stick to what I said I was going to do, which is to try and blitz the whole map using cavalry tactics. And I've done, I've stuck to that pretty well so far, so I don't want to sit here pondering these factions forever, trying to find ways to manipulate them into becoming vassals. If I can just conquer them and move on, I should probably do that, and then later on, if I do more campaigns in 3k, or its expansions, I'll try to do a Yuan Shao campaign, possibly, and actually do that vassal collection, collecting, that I've been considering. Because it seems like there's no real drawbacks to vassalizing. Oh, Make this work, minus 40. Look at that, he is open to that. He is actually fucking considering that shit. So if I make that work, he wants 2k, which is a 4.2 diplomatic weight. And Donghai, which is a small city. Hmm. And I would have to guarantee autonomy. So this actually looks good. Like, none of these three are actually that big of a deal. But I get to vassalize Liu Bei. Holy shit, that's fucking... That's a big deal. Liu Bei is one of the three kingdoms, and I get to make him a vassal because of how much I've blitzed and how contained he is. What's her power like? Their strength compared to yours is similar, their allied strength compared to yours is inferior. So, me, because I've got Sunsa, I'm in a coalition with Sunsa, I'm in a good position to vassalize Liu Bei. So I've got a coalition with one of the other three kingdoms, and that lets me vassalize the last of the three kingdoms. <laughs> yeah, so this is a hell of a power position already, and we're only on, what, turn 25, I think. That's not bad. Alright, so what I think about this, guarantee an autonomy. That makes it more palatable for them to agree to being a vassal, but it comes at the cost of, if we should decide to annex, Absorb this vassal into your faction, claim their assets, territory, and characters. This will destroy the faction. That's extremely powerful. So that means that I could... I could agree to this right now. And then Liu Bei would be my vassal. And then with the click of a button, I would absorb everything of his, including all of his characters. So that would be Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, and anyone else. They would become part of Cao Cao's. Cao's umbrella and we would have strategically masterminded the assimilation of one of the three kingdoms just like that and then we can go for Yuan Shu, Yuan Shao up here and I think once I take Lo Yang which I could also do by vassalizing Yuan Shu which I could do I could I think have Yuan Shu as a vassal as well at this point then I will have incorporated Lo Yang into my umbrella and I'll have completed that mission that we got ages ago and then the next mission will be to take on Yuan Shao so I'll have a vassal a really powerful pair of vassals on either side of my front here and Liu Dai in front of me who I could potentially get as a vassal later on as well he's really res resistant to becoming a vassal so I would have Liu Bei here taking on Huang Shao, who might move on me soon, and then pushing on to Yuan Shao after Liu Bei defeats Huang Shao, and I would have Yuan Shu pushing up across the Yellow River to take on Yuan Shao, and I might actually do that. I might lead with Cao Cao, so I might send Cao Cao and some spearmen under Dun and some more crossbows and trebuchets and archers maybe up to take on Yuan Shao and just take him on, head on, right now. And then I would pass Lo Yang, and then I could see how that plays out with Yuan Shu. Think about it. Sun Tzu though, he might turn on me. When I become king, the Three Kingdoms equivalent of Realm Divide happens, so I've got to be careful. 
and make sure that I don't get swallowed up from the south when I'm facing north. I don't think I'm close to becoming a king yet. That's like becoming... Uh, yeah, it's basically like triggering the realm divide criteria for this game. Alright, so yeah, I definitely want to have Liu baby a vassal. Because this is not a big deal. Minus 40 and have that halved by the autonomy guarantee. I can break my word on that and I'll have a really bad permanent trustworthy penalty. Because right now it's it's stabilised back at zero. It's neutral again, finally. After 20 turns or so. 20 something turns back to zero. So we totally got away with what we did to Yuan Shao at the start and those other factions when we stole their ancillaries. So I can... I can start doing diplomatic shit that fucks me up again. Like I could do a big spurt of treachery and diplomacy. But I don't think I want to. So yeah, I could half this diplomatic weight by just guaranteeing autonomy. And that would mean that it would be a, a really... It would be a much less beneficial move to annex them because the, the penalty, the treachery penalty from annexation is doubled I think. And I think it's a permanent of 35 if you annex a faction that you've promised not to annex. So that really fucks up your diplomacy for the whole rest of the campaign. But I would be assimilating Liu Bei, so... That would be a really permanent acquisition anyway. Liu Bei and his sworn brothers. The Peach Garden trio. So, mm, it's still not that bad of a idea. But I don't want to have a permanent trustworthy bonus, so I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll just have him as a vassal and see how well I can play that off. I might give him my shit cities up here, shit territories. If he's a vassal, I don't think I've got to worry about him attacking me ever, unless some weird diplomatic stuff happens, like some other really powerful faction uh, does support vassal independence, and then they both declare war on me together. But I don't know if that can happen, or how bad that would be, or how likely it is, so... This seems like it might be really safe. Like, permanently a really good move, with no drawbacks. Been thinking about it a lot. Alright, so Dong Hai, that's given me 200 income a turn, at the cost of increasing the size of my empire, and thus corruption. So I could get 20 diplomatic weight for that, and I could give away Match Jian, three shitty forged iron scales, horse. I want to keep the herdsman because that's useful. I can make armies wedge capable with that. Stone archer is kind of shitty. I want to keep all of these sets though, like these belong to sets, nine chapters and Book of Mountains and Seas, they're part of sets. Oh, and celery worth two, fuck. But this one is not very good. Match Gian gives instinct, but instinct Requiring characters can't even wield that shit, so it's kind of a, a shitty ancillary objectively. But the AI don't know that. And if I give away my forged iron scales, which I think I might have actually gotten from Liu Bei one of these to begin with, then I can retain Dong Hai. But that works out at being worth like 2000 each, 4.2 here, and then. 4.2, 4.2, 4.2, 4.2, so... What if I don't guarantee autonomy? I just don't like the idea of taking the 15 or 20 permanent trustworthiness penalty. I mean, you might as well just annex them as a, a complete backstab and say fuck trustworthiness from now on. You might as well just play for max trustworthiness or like, you might as well min-max your trustworthiness situation. I think you can get trustworthy points by a few ways, like joining a vassal's call to arms when you're not required to. Like, if a vassal has war declared on them by someone powerful, and you're powerful, you can come to their aid as a smaller faction and assist them, and that's a virtuous thing to do. That's valiant, admirable. So, I think that, something like that, I remember reading increases trustworthiness 
I don't know if it does it pe permanently, but I do remember reading that shit, so I'm thinking about it. It may be possible to redeem yourself, is what I'm saying, basically. And, and that, that would be really powerful. If you get a plus respect rating in diplomacy, then holy shit. Alright, so I'm thinking... Guarantee autonomy. I'm gonna just do that to make this less difficult to pull off. And would I take 2000 or one of these shit salaries? I'd probably take the 2000, so getting rid of that. And would I take 5 times the 2000 for 10,000 or Dong Hai? I'd probably take 10,000 over fucking Dong Hai, 200 income a turn for. Uh, that's that's crap. That would be like fifty turns to to get that back. So this is a shit city, and it's part of a shit commandery here. The fishing port given food is like all this can do for me. It's got some commerce buildings, but I don't care about that. So I'm gonna just keep my ancillaries and keep my money and give away the forged iron scale, one of the three that I had. And this is bear. So I've swapped the 2000 for the forged iron scale. And I can now get Liu Bei as a fucking vassal. Or I could take one of these, like Iron Mine for 16. Iron Mine is industrial, but it's right up against Wang Shao, so f fuck that. Liu Bei is a vassal. <laughs> Your vassal. And he's given me 355 a turn, so that means that he is making. That's 20%, 5 times, so that's like 1750 income a turn. Is that it? So his autonomy is guaranteed, and he's a vassal. And now I can do diplomatic shit with him. Like, call to arms against. That's just part of the benefits of having a vassal. You can exert your influence. So, fuck. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can do, do like this. There's an option, I remember. So, I can negotiate with a faction that I'm at war with. And then call your vassal to arms. And then declare it. And now, now Liu Biao is at war with Liu Bei. Just like that. And Liu Bei isn't a pushover. He's a really good acquisition because he has a lot of potential because his characters are so potent. They have resilience and they have really good ancillaries and armor and shit. So if I can just give him space, he will become a really valuable ally. And if I was to annex him, that would that would piss off Liu Bei a lot. Like he has a 251 positive, fucking hell. So his attitude, his disposition is very positive. But if I was to do this, and because this is a treacherous action, this is not the final screen, I can do this. Look at that shit. So, minus 35 permanent, minus 41 temporary, so a permanent 35 to trustworthiness, goddamn. Yeah, that's like, you want to avoid that. That cripples diplomacy for the whole rest of the campaign. So I want to have him... I want to have Liu Bei attack Huang Shao. So, he's not at war with Huang Shao yet, but I want him to be. Alright, and Liu Yao down to the south. Wait a minute. Yeah, so, wait a minute, what the fuck? It's a weird screen. Select, select, confirm. There, it worked that time. Did that glitch out on me there? What the fuck? So I'm getting him to declare war on Huang Shao. And that pisses off Liu Yao. So now they're both at war and they share a border. And now I can war coordinate with. 
Lupe to go over here. And now he's gonna move out, I think. So... Why can't I see him though? Look, there's still fog of war, what the fuck? I want to be able to see what's going on. And if I was to try and get this back... 5.6. So he wants to keep it, for some reason. Hmm. And if I was to liberate him... Nah. Crappy option. Why would you want to liberate a vassal, ever? Hmm. So that was really good. 255 tribute a turn. And we gave away Dong Hai for that, so we're actually making a profit. So, now we've got a skirmish happening up here. I wish I could see it. And I can get a spy as well. That's something I was thinking about. No, I can't use any of these. Shit. There's no characters that I can recruit, as there? Because I want to send spies now down to Sunsa. You and Shao, I'm not really intimidated by, but if I can infiltrate Sunsa with spies right now, then in 20 turns or so, I'll have another option available to help grind them down if it comes to it. And I'm thinking about Liu Bei if I want to give him space to expand down here. Because I think he's my vassal for the rest of the game now. I think it's totally up to me if Liu Bei and his assets are ever arrayed against me. Could be wrong, but if, if a vassal can just turn on you any moment, then what the fuck is the point in having vassals? <laughs> It'll be like Shogun 2 all over again, fucking retarded. And I can sell away. This has only given me four food at the cost of 40 upkeep, so... When it here? Yep, it's here. So if I was to give him... Where is it? This fishing port? 15. So if I... If this is worth... If it's four... Four diplomatic weight for... 2000, that's like one diplomatic weight for 500, so that's like 7500 equivalent. Would I take 7500 over this fishing port? And it's for food. 440 upkeep? I think so, because food is not important to me right now. And he is at negative one food. So maybe if I wait and he starts to starve, he will demand food. He has a lot of money in the bank 20k. So if I was to request money to give him this, I would only get 2,500. Fucking retarded, what the fuck? It's not worth it. Keeping it. Maybe it would have been worth it to give him space to expand eventually, because I would have to give him Donghai, Guangling farmland, Guangling trade port, and then he would have a border to expand south. But maybe he can do that already by just marching. So if I was to give him an order to attack down here, attack the Han or attack Liu Yao, I might do that. I might have him after dealing with all this shit to the north, like Huang Shao and Yuan, Shu, Yuan Shao. I might order Liu Bei to go south and attack the Han and start conquering all this shit. And then later on I can maybe just buy territory off of him. Although I've heard that it becomes really extortionately expensive to get territory via diplomacy. But I think I'll have a lot of money available eventually, so maybe that'll work. No movement range left on this army because I just captured Chen farmland, so I'm stuck here. Gonna move up towards the city. Wait a minute. Alright, so look at that. 46.5. So this is possible to pull off, but in this case, I would need to give him Jiang Ling Livestock Farm, give him 8,500 and give him 7,000 over 10 turns. So that's like 15,000 plus a territory. And that's even with a guarantee of autonomy, so this is bad. This is shit. Oh man, like he really wants money from me. And territory. So if I had all of this. And the horse, which I don't need, I don't value horses, of course. Then. 4, 8, 
12, 16, 17 and a bit. And then I've got 8,500 in the bank. Offer food. Oh, he likes that. He likes the food. And that's only for 10 turns, remember? So. Ten turns, ten food, six, and then without giving away any territory or actual money, no territory or actual money, I'm at minus six. Holy fuck. Alright, that, that cow farm, jangling, livestock farm. I don't even have the other part for this, like I don't have the town yet. And that's kind of a shitty commandery anyway, so that kind of works if I was to give him that. But instead of doing that, let's see how money goes, like it's not a good ratio of money to diplomatic weight but yeah it's like 800 each. Yeah, look at that. So 4,800. So four, 4,800 right now. And a guarantee of autonomy. And some food. Fuck, it's tempting to just add more food for this shit. Fucking hell. Look at that, 4,800. So that's... These are equivalent in terms of the diplomatic weight. 480 per food. Fuck's sake. And then the, all of this. Look at that, like these ancillaries. I wish I just had more. Fuck's sake, ancillaries are worth a lot for Yan Shu. Fuck. But I can get Yuan Shu as a vassal. And where's that other option? To support independence. Alright, I'm gonna just do this, I think. This is money without any corruption alongside it for free. So I've got 355 from tributaries right now from from Liu Bei and then I've got another 330. So I'm getting 700 from fucking vassals now. Just money for free. And that gives me that mission. Yeah. So I control Lo Yang via Yuan Shu. And yep, now I need to destroy Yuan Shao. Challenge issued. And I've got another vassal now, fucking hell. So I could annex right now in one fell swoop two of the major factions, Yuan Shu and Liu Bei. And then look at the power that I would wield, the ancillaries that I would acquire. And the only real cost to that would be trustworthiness. Feel powerful. Alright, so let's have a look at this guy. He's already happy with us because we've committed war atrocities against his enemies and broken treaties with his enemies. Who's he at war with? Like, what the fuck? Does he really hate Yun Shao? Who, who does he really despise then? Hmm. And he has no ancillaries to give me. If I was to annex him, that would make Yuan Shao happy. It would make Liu Biao happy. I think it's because I've been fighting against Liu Biao this whole time. Like, we have the same enemy here. He is at war with Liu Biao and his vassals, and we are currently tearing them a new one. So that makes sense. And I need to watch my food. Surplus, it's diminishing. Quickly. And I like how we're doing all this diplomatic manipulation right in front of Yan Shao to take him down, ultimately. And he still likes us. <laughs> He's still fucking friendly. Man, they just don't get it. Oh, so I've got Kong Rong now, so... Meow. Kong Rong is behind Liu Bei up here, penned in on the peninsula. And he has no ancillaries. Can I vassalize him? Nope. <laughs> that would be too much. Can I get him in the coalition? Nope. Neither of them are up for that. 
Although by virtue of being vassals, Liu Bei and Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu are now part of this coalition. Is Sun Tzu happy with me and what I'm doing here? Well, I'm, I'm becoming really powerful really quickly. And it doesn't seem like Kong Rong gives a fuck about food. Hmm. Non-aggression though, he is very pacifistic. So if I do that and request regular payments... Oh man, I can get over 300 a turn. For the next... 10 turns. Look at that. And that's for nothing, that's just for... One food and... A pledge to not attack them, which I was never... Bent on doing anyway, so... More money! Anything else? Nah. 3,700. Fucking hell. And then, yep. Yan Shu. So... Support legitimacy. 10. Wow, our word carries a lot of weight. And... He does want our territories. Like, he has a decent amount of food, but... He wants that livestock farm for some reason. Maybe I could eventually pit Yuan Shu against Sun Tzu. And then he could complete that commandery. And I would be defending from there. And he would be venturing to take over. That would be make it easy to establish a front here. But if I was to give him that farm now... Nah, it's fucking not worth it all. Request regular payments for that. Oh yeah, he really wants that. 460. 470. Yeah, so... 470 a turn, so that's like, that's nearly 5k. For this shit. And I can call him to arms now as well. Fuck, he's already at war. With... Wang Shao up here then. So we're now over 4k a turn. Fucking hell. Yeah, that was really... A lot just changed. And I can't vassalize this guy yet. Nowhere near that either. Nowhere near it. Fuck. And he's got no ancillaries. Not interested in food. Doesn't have any food. Yeah, we're just going to keep trading with that guy. Although I don't care about him anymore, I'd kind of prefer to have trade with someone like Yuan Shu. Maybe I should cancel this then. Can I do that? That would piss off both of them. Can... Can any of them trade with... Wait a minute, let's have a look at this. So yeah, that I like this quick deal screen. I should be checking this frequently. Liu Biao really wants peace. Dong Zhuo would take it. Liu Yao would take it. Kong Rong wants... what the fuck? Wants military access for some reason. So I can get... more... Yeah. Another 100 a turn for 10 turns. To give him military access. He wants that for some reason. Look at all this fucking money. Alright, now it's time to take this campaign seriously. I'm in the territory of Chen, which is perfect for this because I've got... Tontian Conscription for plus three starting rank. Wait a minute, what's that? Is that gonna go up? Plus two, plus three, plus... Nah, it's already on plus three. I think we're here already. No, wait. Fuck it. Alright, we're gonna miss out on one rank. But that's fine. And we're going for... Wait a minute. I need more money. Immediately. Oh, and I should do this. I've been thinking about this too. So I've discovered that... This is a horizontal... Uh, this is not a demotion or a promotion. It's horizontal, so... I won't, I won't take any penalty to... Goji's happiness by doing this. So I'm gonna make him... The administrator 
the economic administrator of because he's brilliant and has the extra 10% income from all sources, I should try and just stack for total income and commercial income, so peasantry, industry, Guangling. I can change him to another one later on, but I think right now, because we have a high base income, no, do we? Fuck. It's not that high. 250 plus 25, 205 plus 120, 240 plus 200, 300 plus, yeah, alright. Jiang Jia, he's got to be the administrator of that shit. And he is perfectly content with that, but that frees up a slot here for someone that needs to be placated. 36, desires higher court position. Anyone ambitious that's in need of office? Increases ambition to gain independence. Yeah, so he can't be an administrator. Committed on is superstitious. And he's someone that's ambitious. Lady Bayan already is the heir. So... And she's rank 6. So if I disinherit her, she'll get a penalty for that, but... She'll still retain office. But her... Her 5% income is not that impressive. Like, if it was Zhu Huang, he would be given melee evasion for melee infantry, which would, which is pretty fucking sweet. Gojia would be given reduced corruption, which looks really good. But I would have to adopt these people. Even Sal Ren with his melee damage for melee cavalry, which we had for a while. Not bad. Dian Wei with his 10% armor for all spear infantry, that's pretty fucking sweet. Starting rank for all recruits, nah. Nah. Then we've got this guy. Melee damage for melee infantry, that is fucking nice. So if we had a lot of sword infantry with high base damage, this guy as an heir, one of the top three, would be sweet. But nah, I'm just gonna leave that for now. Wait a minute. Who is it gonna be? Alright, well, Dune just ranked up. And even though he's dutiful, He's going to eventually get really bogged down with Desire's higher court position, so... And also he's fucking earned it, so... And let's look at this. This is increasing his salary by 250, which is fine. 4,351 to... 4,306, so he's going to eventually start to turn a profit by holding that position. And Gojia taking that position so our income rise as well, so we're at 4.3k now that's one hell of a transformation and we haven't even ended turn yet yep, some good changes there alright, so I've got to move on Yan Shao now, I think finally turning north on force, and I haven't requested aid, that's what got me to thinking about all that shit, so... And everyone's happy, so I can afford... This guy's getting close. 14 on Zhang Hong, fuck. Gotta placate him. Shitty-ass clay cup, maybe. Yep, yeah, clay cup for him to shut him up. This guy already has this course of the states, fuck. So I've got to keep an eye on him, he's the canary in the mine. And I'm going to request aid with... Oh yeah, this is... yeah, look at that, 500 for fuck's sake. 500 on him as well as a vanguard, fuck's sake. I can only do it with Gojia right now, so I'm going to do it. 5.2k, and he's at 6. Alright, so 5.2k to recruit. Gonna go with... Got a rank 10 crossbowman unit. So I'm gonna go... 
three, two, one. So three archers. Wait a minute. I want this army to be potent as fuck. So I might go two, two, two. Can I afford it? Fuck it, I'm doing it. Two, two, two. <laughs> and now for the spears, finally. Look at this discount, 120 upkeep for spears here, for a decent medium spear infantry, 169 for them. They have higher mobility and higher shield block chance on melee, and are cheaper, so they have most of the utility provided by the heavy spear guards at two thirds of the upkeep, so it's worth it to diversify here, so I'm going to go 2k, it's 3000. And just like that, we've got an actual balanced army in the north to take on Yan Shao. And then Dian Wei can group up down here and get some infantry there too. And I'm going to be relaxed about pushing to the south now, I think. I should wait for Dian Wei down there. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Alright, so movement range. No movement left to be done anywhere, no building that I can afford, no diplomacy I think, no spies that I can send out, so that's an end turn I think. Wait, ancillaries maybe? Nah, nothing. Low public order, what the fuck? Oh, that's improving though. And that's taken our population down. Minus 4k. Fuck. But we're actually coming out ahead here. Nice. And Jiangxia, which could get... Peasantry income. And that's even getting some positive food distribution. Minus 10 from having a large city. Yeah, so... I'm gonna get... Maybe next turn... This iron mine from Sunsa backing me up. I think because he's a major faction, he might be first in the turn scrolling, if that's how it works. So maybe I'll have the iron mine. Maybe. Wait a minute, I should maybe force march. Maybe I should do that. Replenishment. We could do with replenishing, but. Oh shit. I can't attack on a force march turn, so... Shit. Can I replenish if I stop here? Shit, maybe I should send an army ahead to... No. We'll see if this works. Nah, no replenishment, God damn it. Fuck it, let's just keep moving. So we're getting closer, and I think I can maybe just take on the garrison there anyway, yeah I can, so I think I can deal with that garrison with just this. I'm not worried, so I'm not going to get to replenish, but I'm not phased. Only got one, two, three, four complete units here, and I can outmaneuver them. Do they have, it's just a farmland as well, so they'll be in the open, so I can pull off something here and get that town next turn. That farmland. And then Huang Zhu will be in fucking trouble. I can't parley with him, only his master, so... And I like how much Liu Biao wants peace suddenly. <laughs> Military strength and strategic situation. Holy shit, are they fucking scared. And I can't vassalize him, like holy shit. What more do I need to do? Fuck's sake, man. And he wouldn't really want food that much. And he has no ancillaries, so... He's in trouble. He is stuck. He is... Right there. And I'm coming at him with a full army soon. We're getting 45% mustering. Look at that. 45 fucking percent. So much better than the early days of the campaign. Down here at Chen, struggling with pieces of units. Fucking 31% on... 
these units, and then 45% on the Heavy Spear Guards. Is that the ton 10 conscription? Nah. Why is that so good? Population. Oh, the mission, I think, did that. Achieving, taking Lo Yang under, into the fold. Did that for us. Can I trade for Lo Yang now? Well, um, the Lumberyard would be hard to take. That gives peasant income. So there's a Lumberyard, which we share a border with now. I could get that. I could use food to take that. Like, every 10 turns I can use food as diplomatic leverage with all these factions. So I need to maintain a really good surplus. So I'm going to try and really put money into these food commanderies and synergizing it really well. And then after after this 10 turns expires, I can maybe start taking territories with food. So I would start maybe with the Lumberyard and then go for Luoyang. But yeah, I like how quickly we've just subdued, diffused all of these potential threats by making them into vassals. This is a really comfortable position, like holy fuck. I think I'm gonna turn now and see what happens. Yep, Sansa's moving first. And he's... no wait, oh fuck, he did the wrong thing. Son of a fucking bitch. And he wants peace for 5k. 5k for peace. I could get peace with Liu Biao and then start trying to destabilize his vassals. I don't know, I don't want to kill him. I think he's wounded up there, so I don't want to fight him again and kill him. I won't even get his ancillaries that way. Maybe I should try to get him as a vassal. Why the fuck is Sansa not helping? Like, why is he going down there? What the fuck, man? I think I should just see how this plays out, so I'll probably have to retreat from... I should have set a war target with fucking Sansa, man. Like, that's something I could have done there. I could have told Sansa to back me up at the fucking iron mine. I don't know if there's a delay on that. If he would have done it immediately. But I could have done that. And then I could have went ahead with this plan here. And then I would have taken out Liu Biao's vassals and be in a position to maybe vassalize him too. Fuck. He is so vulnerable. Like, he's sitting right there with Zhang Hong, I think it is. I think that's his name. He's right there. I could... Oh, man. Maybe I'll be in a better position to do a deal like this once I'm right beside him. Maybe that... It'll factor for that. 5,000, though. And I could use that money. Kinda. I've just saw... I've just watched my income surplus go way down. So once you subtract the diplomacy income, I'm only at 1,400. And I maybe should go ahead and try that trade swap from Liu Dai to Yan Shu and Liu Bei. I should try and trade with these people that have resources. It's probably more lucrative that way. Fuck. Shit, I should, I should probably go for Yan Shao. Maybe I should accept this piece and see where it goes. He can't attack me, so I don't have to worry about that. It would mean... I can immediately recall Dian Wei and train up Spearman and head south and take on Liu Yao and then get Jiang Ling unified and continue to work on synergizing food. Because once I've got that farm upgraded and stacking plus farm percentages, I'll get more food like that. Fuck. But at the same time, he's so vulnerable. It should be one hell of an opportunity to just attack him right now and try and capture Zhang Hong and the other guy and maybe get ancillaries. But if I attack him right now, I think this means that he could die. Don't want him to die. 
Oh man. Take in peace, and then I can start trying to destabilize. I think. Yeah, I think that was the right thing to do. Nothing to be achieved. Oh fuck, fuck. All right, so I might I might give away Peng Chang to Liu Bei. Ah, uh, yeah, I expected that to happen. Fuck's sake. So, Huang Shao is sending Pei. He is the guy that led that victory that I achieved in my Impossible Battles series, Battle Number Three, First One in Three Kingdoms. He led that victory with an army similar to this. So I know he's potent. He's got a book of mountains and seas, and I don't have any armies anywhere near him. Fuck. Wait, what? Yuan Shao requested Liu Dai, so, oh yeah, because they vassalized Liu Dai. I think. Wait a minute. No, they, they made some agreement. Dong Zhuo is at peace with Sheng Jiang. And yeah, the peace we had agreed. 3,800 though, that's really nice. And now we get peasantry income and satisfaction. We get commerce income and satisfaction. So yeah, I saw that. Definitely. Looking good. And look at that, 157 already. And yeah, he is... I think he was going to die there. That bow is what I wanted. Like, if I can vassalize that guy... Nah, we're not close. Trade on salaries. I just want his bow, pretty much. And he wouldn't join the coalition. And his disposition. He fucking hates us. And his disposition towards... Wait a minute, does he like... No, he, he must not. He really likes... No, wait, what? Come on, come on, show me. From their perspective. Yeah, Liu Biao. I want to see... Oh, man. I don't know, man. I thought it was showing that... I think it... I thought it was shown there that Liu Biao likes Liu Bei. What the fuck? Is that what I was looking at there? Like, what the fuck? And what's Liu Bei doing? Is he mobilized yet? Assignments? Oh man, I, I think I missed an opportunity to send an assignment out. Yeah, I did. So I could have had another 100 or so income from having Kang Chin Ting doing Peasantry income. Zhang Wen. Zhang Wen. Right now. Yep. Actually, not really. He fucking sucks. Done a lot of construction. So that money might be useful. And yeah. Go GM ranked up. Alright, well, this is shaping up. Like, holy shit. Fucking two vassals and. Defuse the fight with Liu Biao and his vassals. So I'll continue this next time. And yeah, like there's so much to think about with these complex situations. But I think I'm making decisions that are pretty well in line with what I want to get want to achieve. Like I've got my two Well, my main army at least is pointing in the right direction, heading north. I can conquer this and then try to maybe get Liu Dai rested from Yuan Shao. It seems like they've got some kind of agreement. I think I remember seeing that pop up. I can't vassalize him. Maybe if I just go past him, I can make an on aggression pact with him. So, are they. Like, what's the relationship like between Liu Dai? And Yuan Shao. Yeah, trees. Non aggression pact they have. That's it. So, Yuan Shao has non aggression pacts with Liu Bei, and he's in a coalition with Liu Dai. Oh, okay, I see it now. Alright, so he's in a coalition. 
So if I attack Yuan Shao, I'll have to absolutely annihilate him, obliterate him, blitz him with my main army, and try and leave Liu Dai behind. And then I can vassalize Liu Dai, and, or just find a way to break up this coalition. If I sign a non-aggression pact with Liu Dai, can I then attack Yuan Shao? Or will that count as them being in a coalition? Wait a minute. Yep. When targeting members of coalitions or alliances. Wars targeting members of coalitions or alliances can lead to war escalation, potentially involving all their allies. Yep, so he's going to call upon Liu Dai to help. So I'll have to go around and blitz and then just leave Liu Dai behind and try and vassalize them afterwards once Yan Shao has been taken out. Perfect. That should work out. In the meantime, I'm going to just revel in my bask in the glory of achieving these two vassals and this income and this amount of time to be continued. If you like the videos and want to help me with making more, you can do that on Patreon. Thanks to all my patrons. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, and the Rodi Four Five One.